entitled unto you is born this day of Satan. Amen.
beautiful song, bro. Thank the Lord to give you that talent to amen. play music, write music. I tell you, such a blessing. Yeah, amen. amen. I appreciate y'all's prayers. As you know, last week I was, uh, past couple of weeks, I was under the weather, had this upper respiratory infection thing going on. And I tell you what, it, it, it is no fun. Mm -hmm. I had fever. As soon as my fever break, it come back again. Mm. Say, I thought I think I died a time or two. It was mm. pretty rough. But uh, thank the Lord for your prayers and His healing touch. I was able to get back here to our church. And I missed our family and mm -hmm. be praying for those that are out this morning. We have several that are out mm -hmm. because of this family. stuff going around. And Brother Roy, Sister Carrie, Sister Wanda. Yes, Lord. Are, are all dealing with it. Pray for Vicki, as I said, she yes. fell down last night. And, mm -hmm. uh, she didn't break anything other than busting her lip, but uh, mm -hmm. we need to pray for her. Yes, Lord. Just remember that. Yes, Brother Billy, can yes, I ask a special prayer? Um, there are so many people that are have lost loved ones last year, earlier yes, this year. And, you know, it, no matter whether you know where they are in heaven or whatever, yeah. the pain is still there. Right. The loss yeah. is still there. Yeah. Let's just lift them up this year in prayer at Christmas time and the holidays, you know, yeah. and especially it's hard for families yeah. to go through that. Yeah, Christmas can really uh, be a tough time for a lot of people yes, who it can. have lost folks. And, uh, I know and for again, other reasons. Whatever the reason. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's Let's lots of reasons. Her. But it, you know, Christmas, you know, we love it, but, you know, it can also bring back memories. It you does. Know, so, it does. Yeah, we need to pray for those that are suffering for different reasons. And, you know, we need to keep in mind that Christmas is not about commercial, it's not about Santa Claus, it's about Jesus. Amen. It's about the cross. Amen. It's the biggest birthday, so, uh, it's birthday party of the year. Amen. Amen. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're here, you know, Amen. like I said earlier, uh, you know, the, Jesus wasn't born December 25th, but, you mm -hmm. know, we set aside a day mm -hmm. to worship him. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, we just thank the Lord. You know, John three sixteen, for God so loved the world, that's us, right. all of us, that all he gave us. his only begotten yeah. Son, that whosoever, that's all of us, believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. You know, that, that's the whole gospel just boiled right down there, you know, so... Amen. Uh, this morning, I want you to uh, take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 1. And uh, the Lord just kind of wanted me to kind of take a different spin on the Christmas story that we hear so many times and we go through every year. And, you know, it's such a wonderful story. And, but, uh, you know, there's, there's just uh, things about what happened here that just really popped in my mind about obedience. You know, Joseph... He went through some rough stuff, him, him, him and Mary both. Yes. And it was all about his obedience and her obedience and their, you know, doing what the Lord called them to do. Matthew chapter 1, and starting in verse 18. And now the birth of Jesus Christ was on the wise, or in other words, for the word for the wise, when as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found a child of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, or keep that in mind, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not. Fear not. Can you imagine this time saying that? He, you know he's good and scared. To take unto thee Mary thy, thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. Mm -hmm. Joseph named him. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, 
which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, mm -hmm. which being interpreted is God with us. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Amen. Then Joseph being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord said, had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not, means they did not have relations, till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. 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 Let's pray. Lord God, we do thank you, Lord. Jesus, the name above all names. Yes. Lord, we worship you this morning. We thank you, Lord. Help us, Lord, to get the hectic craziness of this time of year and Black Friday and all the gifts and all the mm -hmm. parties and all the stuff that we sometimes get so overwhelmed with. Lord, help us to get all that out of our mind, Lord, and just focus on you. It's about you. It's about the cross. It's about what you did for us, Lord, that you came as fully man and as fully God incarnate to save us from our sins. Lord, we ask you that you'd help us, Lord, to focus on your word this morning. Lord, that you'd bind the devil and his demons from this place, Lord. I ask you, Lord, that you'd just hide me behind the cross, Lord. Just fill me with you and empty me and me. Lord, we ask you that you would just bless everything that's said. And we'll be careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise that you deserve. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, you know, this time of year is very hectic. This time of year, we, we get so wrapped up in all the things, you know, of, of Christmas. We, you know, we're Christians. We realize that, you know, Christmas is not just a bunch of commercial stuff. But, you know, we wind up getting kind of wrapped up in it. You know, we, we want to do some shopping. You know, we want to buy for our family. We want to take care of our friends. You know, we want to maybe do a little traveling, you know, and go see some things for Christmas. Maybe, you know, go, go visit family. You know, we have parties we want to go to. As I said, we had our annual Miller family uh, party last night at our house. And, I tell you what, our little double Y had about 30 people in it. You talk about a room full of people. We had that AC cranking down about 65, and it was still warm in there. I tell you what, it, it was a room full of people, but you know, it was a blessing because, you know, I thought about it. That room would not have anybody in there if it wasn't for the legacy that my wife Vicki left. She has kids, she has grandkids, great grandkids. That room was full of her family. That's right. You know, and I'm honored to be a part of that, you know, and I just thank the Lord that we were able to do that, you know. And then, of course, like I said, she fell down right before the party started. Mm. And she was sore, but, you know, everybody looked after her and we, we, you know, took care of her. And she's doing okay. She's just real sore this morning, obviously. But uh, anyway, continue to pray for her. But, you know, getting back to this, you know, we need to stop and realize. That, you know, all these things going on this time of year just sometimes takes our mind away from what we need to be focused on. And that's the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, we need to realize that all these interruptions that we get in, in this time of year, sometimes it, we, we have to stop and realize these interruptions may be a godly thing. They may be something the Lord is trying to get us back focused into. You know, God's in control. Amen. No matter what, God is in control. Amen. But you know, God sometimes works through interruptions. And yeah. The best interruption that I can see is right here in our word this morning. Can you imagine Joseph and Mary being interrupted by this situation that, you know, they are going to have a baby. And think about Joseph and what he's going through. You know, his wife she, you know, the Bible says she was just, uh, you know, espoused, and, uh, you know, that she was betrothed, and, you know, in this day and time, that was a legal agreement. Mm -hmm. That was a, pretty much the same as being married, and so, you know, he had to, you know, stop and think about all that was going on, 
And think about his reputation and Mary's reputation. Yeah. You know, the title of my message is Obedience During the Time of Our Reputation. You know, to, to take our reputation and put it on the back burner. Sometimes we have to do that as Christians, you know. And sometimes our obedience just flies in the face of logic. Flies in the face of what people think we ought to be doing. You know, remember this, you know, affected this woman. She was touched, you know, by this Holy Ghost. The, the Holy Ghost had filled her with the, the Son of God. Mm -hmm. You know, in our culture nowadays, we don't think about, you know, how important this is anymore. We, we get too wrapped up in the stuff of Christmas, you know, and the, all the... The, like I said, the shopping and the parties and the gifts and all that, you know. But here Jesus' mother was attending a wedding. And you remember the story. Jesus was older. He asked, Mary asked, hey, we're, we're, we're out of wine. Would you do something about it? Well, there you go. Jesus was interrupted. Mm -hmm. But you know what? God used that. Yeah. And not only was Jesus part of that miracle, but he used people. The servants filled those vats with water. You know, every time the Lord does a miracle, he wants to involve us in that miracle. So, you know, Jesus knew that that interruption was, you know, of his father. And think of another time when Jesus was walking along and this woman affected with the, afflicted with the bleeding, you know, the hemorrhaging. She was, you know, menstruating. She couldn't stop bleeding. And, you know, there's just thousands of people all around Jesus bumping into him and pushing him and shoving him and all that. And all of a sudden said, who touched me? The guys around him were like, man, what are you talking about? Yeah, Dozens of people already are bumping into all of us. But Jesus knew that his virtue had gone. He knew that somebody had touched him with faith. And that was another interruption in the day of Jesus at that time. But you know what? He knew that she had been hemorrhaging for 12 years. And the doctors couldn't do anything about her neck. They couldn't do anything to heal her. And she, she wasted all her time and money on all that. But he she touched the hem of his garment. Yeah. And just from that small interruption, Jesus healed her. Think about the time that blind Bartimaeus, he come to Jesus. He cried to Jesus. And he was, you know, traveling from Jericho. And then Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and he followed Jesus. Jesus was open to interruptions. He knew that interruptions had to be part of the Lord's will, and sometimes we've got to do that. Right. You know, we, we've got to stop and realize in this busy season that we're in, sometimes interruptions in our lives are something the Lord's using us to do to help other people. I'm sorry, my mouth is still kind of dry from getting over this stuff I have, but, you know, sometimes God's greatest work is found when it appears to be an interruption. And this morning, I want us to look at how Joseph reputation was in question and so was Mary's. Mary had been engaged to Joseph. Now like I said in the first century betrothal was a legal binding agreement to be married to a woman and during the betrothal period the groom made all the necessary preparations to begin life as a couple. That's what he had wanted to, to do. He wanted to marry Mary and so you know he was betrothed to her. And then it was discovered here, you know, we, we can look at Luke chapter 1, it reveals that Mary spent three months with her cousin Elizabeth, and she was pregnant. You remember, she was pregnant with John the Baptist, and she was beyond the years of pregnancy. But you know, there's another miracle. And I've got one, thank you. I appreciate it. But you know, Apparently, she was beginning her third trimester and unable to hide the physical evidence that Mary was pregnant. You know, she, she was having a baby. And stop and think about that. This has all happened before the angel come to Joseph. Yeah. This is before he had that dream. Now, think about this. Here he is betrothed to this woman, basically married, according to the laws of the day, and his wife is pregnant. And he, you know, he was a just man, as we saw this morning in our scripture. And that's my first point in verse 19. A just man 
He was a righteous man. He didn't have intimate relations with Mary during the betrothal period until after the marriage ceremony. Joseph would risk his own reputation and public standing by going through with this betrothal agreement. The law allowed him to legally divorce her on the grounds that apparently she was, you know, having sex with somebody else from all appearances. Joseph's motives was to have a secret divorce to avoid shaming Mary. He was caring about her. He wasn't worried about his own reputation. He wasn't worried about what anybody thought. How often do we worry about what other people think? We do all the time, don't we? Yeah. Amen. But he wasn't worried about that. At that moment, Joseph's future seemed to be falling apart. Here he's a just man. He was a man that every Jew wanted to be. People looked up to him. He had a business. He was doing good. He was a, you know, a godly man. He was a good Jew. But you know, sometimes we fail to realize that changes in our lives may be God's plan all along to change the course of the, of, that we're going through. And we see that this morning that God's plan is revealed. Now I want you to stop and think about this now. We're, we're talking about the first century church. We're talking about the first Christmas. You know, we're, we, we, we have a habit of seeing this from the backside. We know what happens. We, we read the back of the book. We know how the Christmas story goes. But see, at this moment, this is unveiling right here with exactly. Joseph and Mary. They didn't know the ending of this thing. Exactly. Mary was being accused of being with uh, other people. I, I was looking at a, uh, a book called the Talmud. It's an oral account, a Jewish literature book. And it said that she was being accused of being with a Roman soldier named Pathura. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that... That was something that was going on. And you know that that's the way it is. It's the same thing nowadays. Somebody comes up showing that they're pregnant. You know, maybe she doesn't have a father, a husband. You know, what what, what do we do? First thing we do, we want to throw accusations. We want to mm -hmm. think, well, who was she with? What did she do? Exactly. You know, and so you have to think about how that was going on. In this place and time, Jesus was even accused of being a legitimate child 30 years later and, and I'll show you that turn with me to John chapter 8 John chapter 8 and verse 41 if you don't turn to it at least write it in your margin now this text these, Jesus is about 30 years old at this point and these are his words as we see in verse 41, he says, You do the deeds of your father. Now watch this. Then said they to him, talking about the other people, talking to Jesus, We be not born of fornication. Yeah. They're accusing him of that. Yeah. They're saying he was a bastard child. Yeah. We have our one father, even God, is what they said. But they're accusing them. So stop and think about this. For 30 years now, Mary has been put through this ridicule because there were so many that didn't want to believe yeah. that the Holy Ghost had come into her. As I said, Joseph was a righteous man in verse 19. This means that he was known to be uncompromising in his obedience. He knew the Bible. He followed the law of Moses. Joseph didn't eat unclean food. He didn't mix with the wrong kind of people. He didn't keep his carpentry shop open on the Sabbath. He wanted to do everything for the Lord. And here this is going on, and you've got to stop and think about what his reputation must have been at that, that day and time and what he was going through. It was all about his identity. You know, as Christians, we got to be careful with our identity. You know, this day and time of the Internet stuff, so much of this... Uh, identity theft and stuff, you know, people can cause accusations of, uh, against you that is not true. Yeah. You know, used to be you could say, well, I don't believe it unless I see it. Well, nowadays, exactly. they can put Sister Linda's head on somebody else's body and say, you know, that was her. Yeah. No. Exactly. You know, it's exactly. all, 
we can't believe anything nowadays with this internet and all the high-tech stuff that's going on. You know, we have to be careful. We can't accuse people of stuff. We have to, you know, realize that, you know, they're innocent until proven guilty. And it's not our place to pass judgment. So this morning, Joseph, son of David, from a legal standpoint, Joseph would be Jesus' stepfather. You know, Jesus had half-brothers and half-sisters. The description reminds us that Joseph, he is in the line of David. The messianic prophecy that we can see in Isaiah 9, verse 7, and in 11, verse 1. The genealogy in Luke traces Jesus' ancestry through Mary back to David. Jesus is a descendant of David. You know, I talked a couple of weeks ago about the shepherd. You know, Jesus, you know... The news about Jesus came to shepherds. Yeah. It didn't come to any highfalutin religious leaders. It came to shepherds mm -hmm. because Jesus was a descendant all the way back, you know, from David. Joseph found himself right in the middle of a fulfillment that we can see in Isaiah 7, 14. You don't have to turn there, but it says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Talk about an interruption. Yeah. Amen. That, that, that is definitely an interruption. We, we, you know, we act, uh, look at things from a human standpoint, from a legal standpoint. Mm -hmm. He would have missed being part of what God had for him to do in history. Adam, I mean, uh, Joseph was being obedient to the Lord. She will give birth to a son in Isaiah 9, 6. God promised that a son would be given. This child wouldn't be just another child. He would be the gift from God to the whole world. Mm -hmm. As I said, John 3, 16. Mm -hmm. Mary, a woman who had never had intimate relationships with a man, she has a virgin birth of Jesus and Joseph has to accept what is going on. He trusts his wife, mm -hmm. his fiance. It's an important doctrine relating to God's plan for our salvation. Mm -hmm. Everything falls into place of what happened here in this day and time with the birth of Jesus for our salvation. Mm -hmm. The Bible teaches that sin is passed down from Adam. Well, you know, we, we know of Jesus as being the second Adam. Sin is both an inbuilt nature in us, but Jesus was born a sinless man. Amen. He was all God. He was all man. And praise the Lord for that. We see God's plan followed here. He did as the Lord's angel told him to do. Joseph obeyed God in three areas here. First, he went through with the marriage. Second, he abstained from the intimacy with Mary until after Jesus' birth. And three, he named the child Jesus. Now we know Jesus had half-brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, Judas, and, and he had sisters, but you know in the Bible they don't always mention the, the women, but he, he had half-sisters, he had half-brothers. And th stop and think about here, this righteous man, this godly man, he was saddled with this problem. The girl he was promised to marry is going to have a baby. And it wasn't his. And he never had relations with her. Can you imagine being in a small town like that? We live in a small town. Yep. You can't get away with nothing around here. Mm -hmm. Amen. Any little thing happens, everybody's going to know about it. Yeah, like they close in with it. Amen, that's right. Yep. Mm -hmm. As a general rule, the word got out there in that small town. So we have a righteous man and a pregnant fiance in a small village, mm -hmm. and as a rule, everybody knows everybody's business. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because we live in this on this side of Christmas, like I said, we know the end of the story, but we want to rush to the end of it because we know how it's going to turn out. Mm -hmm. So stop and think about, put yourself in Joseph's place right now, mm -hmm. what he's going through. We miss the anxiety 
of that young woman's announcement, I'm pregnant. Can you imagine her going to Joseph and saying that? And the tension of that young man as he searches for answers? We might even be tempted to think that Joseph was spiritually slow, you know, that he, he didn't figure it out. But if you miss that, you miss the whole point of what Joseph is learning here this morning and what we can learn from this. There's some amazing stuff going on around this Christmas story this morning. We need to take and really think about it. My second point is Joseph agonized over Mary's pregnancy. Put yourself in Joseph's place, like I said. His fiance is pregnant. His whole reputation and identity evolves around this thing here this morning. He's committed to the law. He's a good Jew. He's a righteous man. A righteous man doesn't disobey the law. Unfortunately for Joseph, and especially Mary, the law had some clear instructions on what to do when this situation happens. Do you remember what happens? And Are you familiar with Deuteronomy chapter 22? Let's turn to that real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 22. Deuteronomy 22. You can see why Joseph was just so upset. And look at verse 21. Well, back up to uh, verse 20 of uh, Deuteronomy 22. But if this thing is be true, and the tokens of, her, of virginity be not found from the damsel, then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house, and the men of her city shall stone her with stones that she die, because she hath wrought a folly in Israel to play the whore in her father's house. So shalt thou put evil away from among you. I say, stop and think about that. Here, Joseph, like I said, he's a godly man. He was a, he was a good Jew. He knew the scripture. Mm -hmm. This had to have been playing through his mind the whole time. Yeah. His wife, his betrothed girlfriend, his fiance, is pregnant. He didn't do it. So he don't know. He don't what. So this is going through his mind. You know, tradition says, the law says, I've got to have her stone. But he didn't want to do that. But the law is clear here. It says that sin must be publicly exposed and punished. But Joseph couldn't bring himself to do it. Matthew 1.19 says that Joseph, being a, a just man, didn't want to make a public example of her. He didn't want to do that to her. The idea here is that he would be righteous if he doesn't want to cause a ruckus. You know, that this had to have been a big ruckus of that day and time. You can just imagine was wanging all over the Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. This doesn't take much imagination to realize that Joseph had to be agonizing over all this. Mm -hmm. But now look, when the angel come to him, Joseph already knew Mary was pregnant. How did he find out? Mary might have told him, but, you know, like I said, put yourself in his place. She was showing by this point. She was in her third trimester. The bad news, Mary's saying, I'm pregnant. Can you imagine her coming to her fiance and saying that? I'm pregnant. But the good news is, I haven't been with anyone else. The angel came to me and said, the Holy Spirit is going to put a baby inside me. Joseph, I'm going to have a miracle baby. Mm -hmm. And all the generations will call me blessed. Now, Mary was just another human being like all of us. She was born sin. She needed a Savior. She knew that. But she was blessed. Mm -hmm. Joseph wanted to maintain his status as a righteous man. So he had all this going on. Then God sends a messenger to Joseph. In verse 20, after he had considered this, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Why did God make Joseph agonize over all this? Mm -hmm. Stop and think about that. Why didn't the Lord just come to him before she was even showing? Mm -hmm. 
sometimes we, we go through trials and problems and we can't understand. God, why didn't you tell me this back before it happened? Yeah. But we got to realize his timing, mm -hmm. his plan. Mm -hmm. That's right. We've got to wait on God. It's got to be what he wants in his will. Mm -hmm. It's a period of growth for us in our, in our faith with the Lord. Just think about the faith that Joseph had to have in, in God. You know, he, he had that faith was just growing, and that's something that we can do when we're faced with these hard times that we're going through. We can use that to help our faith to grow. Now, my third point in closing, Joseph sacrificed his reputation. The angel says that here in verse 20, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Why would Joseph be afraid to marry Mary? I mean, obviously, you know, all this is going on. He would be, you know, wondering about all this. Of course, Joseph would be afraid of offending God and, and violating the law. But it's not just about that. Joseph would be afraid of losing his reputation. You know, we all care about care about our reputation. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we you know, we're Christians. We have to be careful with our witness and our testimony. We don't want anything to mar that. But just, just think about what Joseph's going through here. His whole reputation, his whole work will be trashed. But the angel says, do not be afraid. Joseph does what the angel commands him to do. He does two things here. Verse 24, he takes Mary home as his wife. That's a legal step. It means that he is publicly claiming her as his wife in the face of all this that's going on. In the act of naming a, a baby, that's another public thing, another act of law in this day and time. You know how important names are in the Bible? Yes. Mm -hmm. Very important. When Joseph chose to name Jesus, that's another legal act. Joseph is publicly adopting this child as his son. And you know good and well he had to be a, a godly man. And Mary had to be a good mom because you see later on his half brother and half sister that they got books in the Bible. I mean, you know, they're the godly people. Joseph was made, you know, he had to make a decision. And it was hard for us to comprehend. His days as a righteous man seem to be over. Whatever the future has for him, he has to accept the Lord's will. Since that time, millions of people have made sacrifices for the name of Jesus. You know, Brother Jerry was talking about that this morning in Bible study, the sacrifices they did as missionaries to Belize. Mm -hmm. They didn't know where the next meal was coming from. They, they, you know, like I said, he didn't make no money, but they trusted the Lord in everything yeah. they did. That's something we got to do. We got to trust the Lord in everything that he puts Amen. us into. And we don't always understand it. We don't always have, you know, answers. But it's not for us to question. It's for us to have that faith. The righteousness that Joseph possessed as a righteous man of compassion and self-denial, this also is that same kind of righteousness Jesus possessed. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 7 says, But he made himself of no reputation. That's there, that word again, reputation. And took on himself the form of a servant that was made in the likeness of men and being made and being found in the fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross Jesus knew his ministry right from the beginning he knew that he came to save this world and he was obedient right to the death right to the death of the cross Jesus was filled with compassion. He saw the hopelessness of this world. He became a man and gave his life for us. And became all, he was all God, he was all man. Right now, I would like you to just think about one person in your life who needs to be shown compassion at this Christmas season. You know, as I said, we, we come together, we have family get together. Sometimes families don't get along. We can't choose our family. Sometimes we have a hard time getting along with Uncle Joe or Aunt Betty or whoever, you know. But you know, we got to show compassion. That's right. We got to show them the love of Jesus. 
now is the time we can be a witness to somebody we may only see once a year. That's right. We've got to stop and realize that. I believe that God had a reason for this odd, painful, lonely way for a family to start. We think about Joseph and Mary and the baby Jesus. I believe God still calls people to be willing to die to reputation. Yeah. To serve him, to be yeah. obedient. How obedient are you this morning to the Lord's will? Are you sitting at home and you're listening online? You're not even taking the time to come to church. You'd rather just take your comfort into your own hands instead of being out with other family members of your family, the godly family that we are. We are all God's family. Stop and think about this. Joseph thought it was the end of being a righteous man. But here we're reading about him thousands of years later about his obedience and how Mary was obedient and how they trusted the Lord and everything that happened in their lives. I pray this morning that we all have a divine interruption. I pray that we all have an opportunity to take our reputation, put it on the line for Jesus to obey him, to be obedient to Jesus and whatever's going on in our life. This morning as I close, would you like to know this Jesus that we preach about? Would you love to have, wouldn't it be something to start this Christmas knowing the Savior? He's not just a baby in a manger. He's the King of kings and Lord of lords. Yeah. He's coming back any second for his church. And you better be prepared. You better be ready. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, now you can come to know him. I don't. I know everyone here is saved, but you know, I never want to assume on God. If anybody has anything you need to clear up with the Lord, any business, you know, any anything that you need to take care of. Maybe you have family that you're having a problem with and you're you know, struggling to, to give them compassion and love. Now's the time to take that thing to the altar. If you're listening this morning, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, now's the time to come and give him your life. Make this Christmas the best Christmas you've ever had. Make Jesus Lord of your life. Amen. Amen.